Welcome back to video two of how to build a platform storage bed with drawers, otherwise known as a captain's bed. This video we're going to show you how to put this part together. Last video we did the footboard and the headboard, so let's get to it. Well, this next part is my least favorite part of the project, and I've kind of been putting it off a little bit, but it's time to, it has to be done. And that is breaking down this three quarter inch plywood into the pieces needed to build the platform boxes where the headboard and footboard go on the ends and where the drawers go into. This is very, very heavy and very awkward to work with, and that's why I don't like doing it. Usually I like buying plywood at the big box stores where they have the panel saw and they'll make the cuts for you. Makes it a lot easier to handle in and out of the store, ready to go when you get home. But I gotta make three rips, or make two rips, three pieces on each sheet, and I have three sheets to do. So the easiest way I've found to do this by yourself is lay the plywood onto the table, uh, and put stickers, just scrap two by fours to elevate the plywood off of the table and then set your saw blade depth shallow enough so that it doesn't cut through the table, but deep enough so that it cuts through the plywood. You know, clamp it to the two by fours so nothing moves. Super easy and safe. And there we go. Nine pieces, 16 inches wide. They're gonna end up being 75 inches long and that'll leave us enough to make ends for the boxes. And then the extra piece will cut to make the dividers where you put the drawers in. And if you're interested in any of the math, here is uh, some stuff I figured out. The three drawer option, the four drawer option. This would be your platform with four drawer openings, the drawer, and the half inch four by eight sheet, kind of a cut list. I figured out that a four drawer configuration works best because it uses a full four by eight sheet perfectly. And all of these are the drawer box uh, pieces bunch of 15 inch pieces for the sides and then a bunch of 16 and 9 16 pieces for the backs and then as I said for the fronts of the drawers we're using that 1 by 10 piece of pine board. Using 3 quarter inch plywood to build our boxes we're using a 1 and a quarter inch pocket hole screw. Now I just got to do that seven more times. So this back piece is clamped to the side piece using the 90 degree corner clamp at the bottom. And then the top I adjust this way, um, but I screw it from the bottom. Then I adjust this clamp because there's a little bit of a bow in this piece to make this perfect here. And then I move up and clamp that and screw that one in. Just a quick side note here, in the last video where we built these headboards and footboards for this project, someone in the comments asked a question about how to attach this top cap to the rest of the assembly, and I guess I forgot to show that detail, so. Here's the back of a footboard, and you can see where I pocket hole to attach the top cap here. To the top rail, I just pocket hole into the end of the cap and then up into the cap from the top rail on each end, and that makes it super sturdy. And it works here because this is offset by like an inch and an inch and a half, so you have enough room to get in there. But that's how you do it. So to help us complete this farmhouse bed project, I have to thank today's video sponsor, Helix Sleep. 
So I think I mentioned that I'm building these beds specifically for the Helix Sleep mattresses. Once again, they've partnered with us on this project. Helix Sleep makes premium mattresses and bedding that are customized to fit your needs and conveniently shipped right to your door. I've never slept better in my life. I'll never use anything other than a Helix sleep mattress from now on. I've been sleeping on this one for about six months. My back has never felt better. I've never gotten a better night's sleep. I'm more productive during the day. It's freaking amazing. I never thought a mattress could be so good because I always slept on crappy mattresses, I guess. It doesn't matter if you sleep on your back or your side or your stomach or your partner sleeps differently than you. Go to helixsleep.com, fill out the little questionnaire about all that stuff, and they'll build you your mattress. It's super easy to order online, takes five minutes, comes to you shipped in a box, rolled up uh, right to your door, they ship it for free. You get a 100 night trial to literally sleep on your decision. This is the Midnight Lux mattress. It's a little bit of a firmer mattress. I'm personally a back and side sleeper, so the Helix Midnight Lux mattress was the perfect match for me. The ones we will use on the full-size beds that I'm building now are the Sunset Lux mattress. They're a little bit of a softer mattress, but it's whatever you want. And you can personalize your mattress even more by adding their Glaciotex cooling cover, which is a great way to keep cool during the hot summer months. So, 100 night sleep trial, 10 year warranty, free shipping, and if you use our link below, helixsleep.com slash gilbrook, get 20% off and two free pillows with your purchase. Get yourself a Helix Sleep mattress today, you will not regret it. All right, next step is to put the backs onto the boxes because we need to square these up. See how that's kind of curved and bowed? It's just the way the plywood was. So we want to get that all squared up before we start putting our drawer dividers in to make our drawer spaces. So we're going to get these two corners pinned uh, and the whole f assembly needs to kind of cant this way. Put a staple in about every six inches. this divider into the center. Which should spread this out squarely the whole way. So with the divider in, just kind of sitting there to spread this out, I stapled the back on from the bottom just to get it to where it's squared up. And that's how you square up an unsquare box. All right, I just had to go get another sheet of five millimeter plywood for the drawer bottoms. I somehow forgot to calculate, but here it is. And I got to cut uh, 16 three quarter inch wide strips and then cut those into 15 and a quarter inch chunks to make 12 drawer bottoms. Slice, slice, cut, 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 cut. So I'm gonna lay out a drawer here just for, to see how it all goes together. I'm gonna to have a half inch space between the bottom of the drawer and the bottom of the drawer front to give us room 
this to move around. Um, this will be the drawer bottom and the sides will sit on top of that and we will glue and staple the bottom into the drawer side and we will leave a quarter inch here that will slide into a dado that we're going to cut into the front uh, on the router table and that will make everything kind of fit together quite nice and that allows you to build a drawer without having a drawer box front and then a drawer front attached to that uh, again and this is all inset so that's kind of the layout and uh, here I, I'm just uh, making sure like the top is, is good you know we're gonna have a half inch here half inch here uh, about a quarter inch here and all that fits together pretty well um, and then the back fits on the inside like this that way you pocket hole into the back and then you'll never see that even though you will see two pocket holes here so that's kind of the general layout of all 12 drawers kind of just like a data All right, now we're going to assemble drawers. Got our pre-finished drawer fronts with the dado cut out the back. And I stopped it about uh, 3 8 from the end so you don't see it. So we're going to pocket hole screw the sides to the back. The back is the wider piece so this lets me do my 90 degree and get everything lined up and perfect this is probably overkill but I like to have this perfectly squished together so that when you screw it in, it doesn't shift. Using this as a spacer, which is another piece of backing, uh, back material. So that gets our reveal perfect for uh, the uh, drawer slides to fit into. So I put the drawer front face down on the table, then I set the drawer onto it, and I've got a piece of drawer bottom material that I have in the uh, dado here, just to get everything lined up the way I want it to be. Snug that to that, make sure this reveal is 3 8 this reveal is 3 8 and screw it in. Don't want to over tighten them because you'll split the wood just like anything else. Take that spacer out. And now we have a drawer box without a bottom. So the bottom, set that like that, get a bottom. Let's see if this fits. Dry fit. And that works pretty good right there. Double check everything for square because it has to be square for your drawer slides to work. Pretty nice drawer. No, just do that 11 more times. Here's a little trick I figured out. So when you're doing custom drawers with 
relatively inexpensive drawer slides like this that uh, have pretty much no tolerance, no forgiveness. Here's what I'm trying to do. I take the two sides of the drawer, the two drawer slides in the back, and I want to make sure that fits perfectly from, from front to back. And it doesn't bind up anywhere, because that's basically how your drawer slides are going to work. And that works good, so this is exact. Now if this was too tight, I would take a little wee bit off this back piece. If it was too loose, I'd probably end up having to fur this out a little bit, but works perfect. All right, it's a few days later. I managed to finish all of the drawers and all of the boxes that the drawers go into. So I've got four boxes, three drawers per box, total of 12 drawers, two beds. So I've got four spaces in each box. Uh, the far left space is empty so that you can put like a, an end table there. So that would be the left side box if you're facing the bed like from the foot to the head like that. And then opposite for the other side so that this would be the right side. End table there, three drawers. Now I gotta haul these up two flights of stairs and start assembling these beds. Now we are on to assembly. We just got to bolt together these four pieces, headboard, footboard, to the two boxes. And uh, so I'm elevating the boxes off the floor four inches by setting it on a two by four nailed to a piece of half inch plywood to give us our four inch spacing. Kind of doing that deal. Then we'll get it squared up to the headboard. And you can see how this bolts right to the nailers that we've attached. And we'll get the width right for our full size bed. And we'll do the footboard. I'm basically going to use six construction screws in each end, three top, three bottom, three top, three bottom on the headboard and the footboard. So it'll be 24 screws and it should never come apart. All right, so here we have it. If you want to do a fourth drawer, you can. Uh, again, I left that open because there will be an end table there, and once that's there, you won't even see that. And if you're gonna put an end table here, you don't want a drawer there because it'll hit it. And we got our 54, don't know if you can see that, but that's 54 inches, and inch and a half overhang or reveal here, just like we laid out. And again, the mattress is 14 tall, so we'll have plenty of space there. Last step before we set up the mattress will be to put a ledger strip there, down three quarters of an inch, and then do slats so that it'll support the mattress. Just like that, now we'll put a little inch and a half pin just to hold everything. And if that needs to come out, you know, to break it down, you can just pop it out. And there we go. Now we're ready for a mattress. Now these will puff up, and those are your two free dream pillows that come with the purchase of your mattress. 
Well, there you go. If you've been wanting to build your own bed, save a whole bunch of money and end up with a product that is of much better quality than you can generally find in any store. Hopefully this was helpful to you. Maybe you got some inspiration from it. This is how I've been doing it now. I built three of these and I really like the way they turn out. They look good. They're super sturdy. Can't ask for anything better. Now I just got to do a couple more side tables again. So that's going to do it for this episode and this little series. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.